voices. Damn, damn. Hey, welcome back to Screen Crush. I'm Ryan Airy. Warwick Davis is back in the new Willow series on Disney+. Plus. Now, the original Willow movie was released in 1988, 34 years ago. That's like over two centuries in my time. Yeah, that's right. So a lot of you might have forgotten some of these little details about this movie. And even if you've never seen the movie, we're going to break down everything you need to know before you watch the series on November 30th. So let's dive in. Now, first of all, George Lucas, the creator of Star Wars, also created Willow. And at first, it was simply titled Munchkins. Lucas came up with the idea way back in the early 1970s and first approached Warwick Davis during the filming of Return of the Jedi, asking him to play the main character. Now, in Return of the Jedi, Warwick Davis played this guy. <laughs> But five years would pass before Warwick was actually cast in the role. Lucas thought it would be great to use a little person in a lead role. A lot of my movies are about a little guy against the system, and this was a more literal interpretation of that idea. Also, George knew that the visual effects technology necessary to bring this fictional world to life was not ready until this point in the 1980s. So then Lucas approached Ron Howard to direct. Some of you might remember that Ron Howard starred in George Lucas's first big breakout hit, American Graffiti. Now, Ron Howard was fresh off the success of cocoon and looking to develop a fantasy project for himself. Howard nominated WKRP and Cincinnati writer Bob Dolman to write the screenplay based on Lucas's story. And with the additional cast of Val Kilmer, Joanne Whaley, Billy Bartley, and Gene Marsh tacked on, cameras began rolling. So this is a fantasy like Lord of the Rings? Well, it is set partially in New Zealand and it also deals with a powerful precious cargo that must be protected from evil at the focal point of the narrative and two fighting wizards and a ranger who's really good with swords and there's trolls. They have a cave troll. And there are hobbits. No, they're not hobbits. They're called Nelwyn. And while it's not Lord of the Rings, the plot is packed with classic fantasy tropes. Queen Bav Morda, who is also an evil sorceress, rules the land of Nakmar and is waging war with the Galadorn. She has already defeated a nearby kingdom, Tyr al -Sin. Characters played by actors of average height in this world belong to a group called the Daikini. Nelwyn, like Willow Ufgood, are people of short stature. And there's also the Brownies, who are less than a foot tall and are more like the fairies of this world. Will you go to the dance with me? Will you go to the dance with me? Will you go to the dance with me? Of course, buddy. What dance are we going to? Not you, person. I'm just practicing to see if Billy wants to go to the dance with me. But I'm just a common dog. Who would want to go to a dance with me? Uh, well, Doug, if you want to sound more impressive, then you could get a certificate from Established Titles. They're the sponsor of this video. Established Titles is a fun novelty gift that allows you to purchase one square foot of land in Scotland, which technically makes you a Scottish landowner, and according to Scottish custom, this allows you to have the title of Lord or Lady. Now, my own land is on a private nature reserve in Edelston, and my purchase helps to preserve their woodlands. That's the cool thing about this certification. It's not just a novelty gift, it helps protect the woodlands of Scotland. With every order, Established Titles plants trees all over the world through their charity partners One Tree Planted and Trees for the Future. So you'll get this certificate with an official crest and a unique plot number so you can see the exact location of your land. And then you will be allowed to officially change your name to Lord or Lady. It also makes for a great last minute gift. I mean, just look at some of these reactions. Lord Joel Green. Yes! Lord Kenneth Delane Albert. All right. Hey, look at that. You will be calling me Lord! <laughs> Established Titles is actually running a massive early Black Friday sale right now. Plus, if you use the code Screen Crush, you get an additional 10% off. Established Titles even told me that the first 200 people purchasing a title pack with my link will effectively be next to my plot or like within walking distance. Depending on how many people want to be a lord or lady, we can have our own little Screen Crush kingdom. So go to EstablishedTitles.com slash Screen Crush to get your gifts now and help support our channel. Now back to what I was saying. So there's a prophecy that a child with a special rune birthmark will bring about the downfall of Queen Bav Morda. So she does what any sensible evil queen does. She imprisons all pregnant women in her domain so she can catch the baby immediately after birth. You're a monster! The foretold child is born, but the mother persuades the midwife to smuggle the baby girl out of the castle. So Bav Morda executes the mother and sends out her war riders, sorry, I mean her Nakmar hounds after the midwife who gets the baby adrift on a grass raft, Moses style. The baby is sent safely down river, but the midwife is killed by the dogs. Now some distance down river in a Nelwyn village, the baby is found by the family of a farmer and aspiring sorcerer named Willow. Much to his disgruntlement, his family takes her in and comes to love her. The village is throwing a festival. <laughs> Sorry, I meant this. And at the festival, a Nakmar hound attacks. After the Nelwyn warriors kill it, Willow presents the baby to the High Aldwin, who orders that it must return to a Daikini. So a fellowship is formed with Willow, and they set out to find a Daikini to take over the baby. Meanwhile, Bab Mortis sends out her daughter Sorsha and a bunch of black riders, led by the Witch King. 
sorry, I mean by General Kale to hunt down the baby. The Nelwyn find a warrior named Mad Mardigan trapped in a crow's cage at a crossroads. He offers to take the baby in exchange for his freedom. Now Willow and his friend Migosh refuse, causing the others to abandon them and go home. Now Willow eventually relents and agrees to Mad Mardigan's terms. On the way home, Willow and Migosh discover that some brownies have actually stolen the baby. I uh, it's almost as if they want it to be followed. Indeed, which is why Willow does and then gets captured. A fairy queen named Galadriel, sorry, a fairy queen named Sherlindria trees them and explains the baby is Alora Danan, the foretold princess of Tirasleen who has chosen Willow to be her guardian. So the queen gives her a magic wand and sends him to find Finn Raziel, an aging enchantress. Oh, Gandalf! It's not Lord of the Rings. Stop, you're in my head too much here. On the way, he re-encounters Mardigan at a pub just as Sorsha and Kale's army arrives. Mardigan starts a brawl, which helps Willow and Mardigan escape with Alora. Then Mardigan leads Willow to the lake where Raziel lives. Now Willow discovers that she's been turned into a possum by Bav Morda. He tries to restore her with his new wand, but instead he turns her into a rook. From there on, it's a game of hot potato with baby Alora going back and forth between Willow and Captain Kale. There are some battles, trolls, love potions, because brownies can make those, monsters at Tirasleen, and a winter wonderland sled before Kale succeeds in capturing Alora. Now, Bav Morda then orders the preparation of a ritual to banish Alora from the world forever. People get turned into pigs, Willow finally turns Raziel back into human form, and Willow's gang also gets turned back into human just in time for Mardigan to arrive and have an Aragorn and Baromir moment. Win this whole for me. And the final showdown is between two powerful wizard, ah, sorceresses, between two powerful sorceresses. So after a grueling fight, Willow uses his sleight of hand to trick Bab Morda into thinking he has made Alora disappear. Bab Morda moves to attack him, but accidentally completes the ritual in the process, banishing herself. At the restored Tira Sleen, Willow is gifted a spell book by Raziel and leaves Alora in the care of Mardigan and Sorsha. He then returns home to his village and family in triumph. Now, Willow debuted on May 20th, 1988, and while it was far from a flop, it nonetheless underperformed and was met with Howard's directing and Lucas's screenplay coming under fire. The movie had its fans, but it was never going to be another Star Wars. Roger Ebert called it turgid and relentlessly predictable. Ouch! After all that, how did it get greenlit by Disney for a series? Well, Doug, that's the power of cult classics. Even though the box office was less than stellar, it found a following through home video entertainment and three sequel books called Shadow Moon, Shadow Dawn, and Shadow Star. Now, these are collectively titled Chronicles of the Shadow War, which takes place about 15 years after the original film and feature a teenage Alora Danan as a central character. Now, Lucas released this with pristine X-Men comic book writer Chris Claremont, and it did pretty well, sales-wise. So rumors then began swirling about a possible sequel, yet it wasn't until Jonathan Kasdan was working on Solo A Star Wars Story with Ron Howard that any real traction finally happened. I just thought everything about it lent itself to more stories in that world. The series was then greenlit in 2020 with Howard on board as an executive producer. So what do we know about the plot? Are we getting dwarves? No, at least I don't think so. What we do know is that even though it's over three decades since the first film, the series will be set 20 years after. There will also be eight episodes. We know that Willow Ufgood seems to have reached treated to the relative seclusion of his woodland home as the series began. He also seems to have fulfilled his wish to become a great sorcerer. He's got a glowing staff and a magical flamethrower. Flamethrowers always mean magic. <laughs> What the hell is that? Don't worry about it. The trailer shows us that a band of young adventurers seek his help to attempt a daring rescue of the princess's twin brother. My brother was abducted. The world needs you again. It needs your magic. Follow me. Now this new princess is Kit, the daughter of Joanna Whaley's character Sorsha, who is also back. Now a queen herself, she's got a family and a kingdom to look after, and she'll once again need Willow's help. The official trailer also revealed that Kevin Pollock and Rick Overton have returned for the series as Willow's brownie friends. Though, who knows to what extent? Just like old times. Ah, running. Horses! Man! Man! Happy to see Eddie. The incoming cast is led by Ruby Cruz's Kit, who heads out on a rescue mission after her brother, played by Dempsey Brick, is abducted by dark forces. Joining her on this mission are her best friend and aspiring knight, Jade, portrayed by Solo's Aaron Kellyman, Borman, a thief and warrior trying to win his freedom, played by Amar Chata Patel, and a kitchen maid, played by Ellie Bambier, who is in love with Kit's brother. Tony Revolori of the Grand Budapest Hotel and Spider-Man fame is also a member named Graydon, a young scholar. Another nice addition is Warwick's own daughter, Annabella Davis, who will appear as Willow's daughter, Mims. Christian Slater also got announced at D23 as a new member, Allagash, a friend to Mad Mardigan. Er, who's he? Well, they're not revealing too much about it, but Jonathan did have this to say. There's a musical <laughs> aspect to Christian's There is a character. musical aspect, sure. And we'll say safely, none of it was scripted. Sadly, Val Kilmer's Mardigan is not back for the series, but he is there in spirit. Creator Kasdan noted that he's had conversations with Kilmer about the character, and Mardigan lives on as a major figure in the story. Wait a minute, what about baby Alora? Wasn't she the 
whole point of the first movie? Yes, what happened to her? Why isn't she ruling? So far, they've only mentioned her once in a special look trailer. Laura Dennon was destined to save our world. Her true identity was concealed, even from herself. Now, according to creator Kasdan, what happened to Alora is the central question of this series. Here's how he explained it to Collider. The show is really about that question, and about answering it, and how it affects the lives of all these different people, and how that character and that savior sort of figures into the future history of the world. And that was what we were going to do, and that was what I pitched to them from day one. We get to see what that little girl grew up to become. And the question is, where does she fit into our story, and at what point? Ah, what a way to leave us hanging there, Jonathan. I guess we'll just have to wait and see when Willow comes out on Disney Plus on November 30th. Hey Doug, did you ever ask Billy out to the dance? Nah. All right, well that went nowhere. Just a reminder, check out the link in the description for your own established titles. But let us know what you think. What do you think happened to Allura? How do you think they'll incorporate Mardigan? Who is the big bad of the series? Leave your comments below or at me on Twitter. And if it's your first time here, please subscribe and smash that bell for alerts. For Screen Crush, I'm Ryan Airy.